I don't know. I wear it with a badge of honor. I don't know who upsets the opposition more, myself or the member for Kingston and the Island. This is a very exciting time. We are about to start what will very likely be the last fall session of parliament the liberals are going to have in a long time. Or sorry, let me rephrase that, that they will have as the leading party. That's all about to change. So with that being said, in the spirit of this moment, what I want to do was repost a previous video I'd done. It's one of the more popular ones. It's a compilation of the many times airheaded liberal MP Jennifer O'Connor has shot herself in the foot or ended up with egg on her face. I love this compilation. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So watch it, get that blood flowing, and let's get ready for the next session of Parliament. I'm just curious if she thinks there should be consequences or, uh, or retromand for members of this house who meet with known Nazis who spread uh, misinformation, disinformation, glorify the Holocaust, who speak against uh, uh, anti-Muslim rhetoric. Uh, I'm just curious if she's talking about online hate and privacy of Canadians and regulation. Does she condemn her actions by meeting with a known Nazi uh, in this country who spout anti-Muslim rhetoric? The Prime Minister has put on blackface so many times. He has degraded black people. He literally put a banana in his pants. And you have the audacity, you have the audacity to stand and look at me as a black woman and ask about my meeting with another member of the European Parliament. That is within my job description. I do not have to, I do not have to approve of everything that another member believes in in order to have the decency to have meetings with with other individuals your prime minister this prime minister denigrated black men by putting a banana in his pants shame on every member over there that does not chastise them if this were any other country he would not be leading and he would not have the moral authority to lead he would not have that moral authority order this is here. Sorry, uh, excuse me. I have the floor, and I'd appreciate. Excuse me. And I have the floor deliberately to cause conflict. That is your role. I'm a member of the parliament. This has been a peaceful committee until you intervene, and that is how you speak to your colleague. Get out of here. You said I'm very eloquent. You said I'm not. You're not going to bully us. You are not going to bully us. Canadians are going to hear from the witnesses, and we demand. That. Dr. Lewis, Ms. O'Connell had the floor. I think we can all respect each other. It's the standard practice here in this committee. Let's not bring what's occurring in other committees into this room. I'd like the opportunity for you to actually answer the question because as we've seen, conservatives seem to only be interested in their own clips and not actually providing information. Mr. Vilmier laughs. I think he'd prefer I make him a sandwich and allow the, the work to be done by the men in this room as he uh, had indicated to me. Um, but I think what's important, I'll stick to the actually doing this work as someone who served on ENSICOP, who's been looking at foreign interference. Point, point of order, firm. Chair. Point of order. Uh, point of order? Go ahead. Yeah, m Mr. Chair, um, Ms. O'Connell cannot just make outrageous, baseless accusations against my block colleague in this, in this forum. She, 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 simply because of a, a facial reaction to a discussion, she, she made a vile Mr. accusation of, of sexism Mr. against Dennis. him. That's unparliamentary, Dennis, and she should enough. withdraw. Mr. Dennis, it's, uh, I get your point, and, uh, but it, it's really not, uh, it's, it's in the debate at this point. Sure, it is, it is not about debate. It is a, it is a point of order about decorum. Uh, I quite understand. Uh, Mr. Villemur, I believe, has wishes to speak on the same point of order. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. My colleague here jumped on this faster than I could. I think that the comment was impolite and unnecessary. I see. Thank you. Um, separate point of order. 
Mr. Biddle on the same point of order. I, I, I've called this out before, and um, he's not the only one, but he's, uh, Mr. Genuis is a uh, frequent uh, 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 one to very much lean into the mic. We do have uh, interpreters here, um, and um, like uh, Mr. Genuis, uh, my voice, usually the volume isn't the problem. Um, and so the mic can work from a lengthy distance. We don't have to lean into it to yell into it. Um, so I was wondering if Mr. Genoas can respect the interpreters and just stay back. It's something he frequently does. Thank you. Different point of order, but but well taken. We all, I think, we all have a tendency to lean in, and uh, we have to be respectful of the interpreters and their hearing. So, anyways, uh, Ms. O'Connell, please carry on. Please make sure, Chair, that this didn't take away from my time. Also, uh, if Mr. Vilmier may call me impolite, but I think he would be quite embarrassed if, uh, and Mr. Janis may not have defended him so clearly if he had heard some of the comments towards me while we were suspended. But I'll move on to the actual work. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing Standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca. Dot CA to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government. Canadians, that they don't actually care about national security interests in this country because order. if they did... Order. The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton on a piece on a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker, you know that the new guidelines have been issued and that um, we're not allowed anymore to um, make comments that question the courage, honesty or commitment to their country of other members in this House. And so I think that was where the Liberal Member went on that one, if you could correct her. I thank the Honourable Member. I, I would just remind the House that we try to use our, our, our words in a judicious, judicious manner to try not to cause uh, disorder. So I'll give the floor back to the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Speaker, it seems I've hit a very specific nerve with the Conservative Party. It so. seems I am alluding to exactly what they are afraid of, which is that they are not serious when it comes to matter of matters of national security. They're reckless when it comes to producing meaningful legislation that would actually yep. keep Canadians safe. But because there's trying to be trying to put that information public. Would members opposite be comfortable if an agent in the field or if someone collecting that information, if that was then eventually used to actually harm someone serving our country? But you got a tweet out of it, right? Mr. Speer, Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives are nothing more than conspiracy theories, personal attacks, just like the